Hi and welcome. Thanks for tuning in to Travel Insights on Calkine TV. Holly Shields here, welcoming you to another episode. And this time we're going coastal as the weather warms up. Today we're joined by David Doodle, Managing Director of Australian Coastal Safaris. Welcome to the show, David. It's a pleasure to have you with us. G'day, Holly. How are you going? It's great to have you on and great to be here as well. Thanks for letting us um, tell our story. Thanks for joining us. Now, we know that travellers are seeking more and more meaningful and unique experiences than ever before, on top of turning towards domestic travel rather than international. So what are the other emerging trends that you're noticing at the moment? Uh, look, um, obviously, uh, we haven't been able to have any international travellers come here. Um, so the domestic uh, traveller has been keeping us quite busy, uh, particularly the interstate traveller coming from South Australia. Um, quite clearly, our uh, borders have been shut to you know the east coast and uh, of Australia, so those uh, those travellers can't come on down here. So uh, yeah, we've uh, we've got uh, people from Adelaide and uh, um, the other regional parts of South Australia come down here to, um, as we describe, our beautiful backyard and uh, what we have to offer. That's great to hear. And uh, you're not having any issues with interstate travel at all, are you? Because there are still some restrictions in place. Oh, look, um, here we've got plenty of restrictions. Our borders are currently closed to New South Wales and Victoria. Um, and uh, so, you know, being uh, with those regions being the, uh, the biggest um, uh, travellers, I think, um, in, in the country, we are uh, Certainly, uh, been really in the effects because of um, because of these uh, border lockdowns, um, where we've had uh, you know, a number of um, uh, travellers coming down here with uh, you know, small groups, and unfortunately, we we're forced to uh, cancel all their travel arrangements down here with us. It's terribly unfortunate, but it does sound like you are bouncing back in a big way, especially as summer is just around the corner. Is that fair to say? Yeah, well, uh, hopefully in the next um, few weeks, um, you know, obviously New South Wales is now open, or it's going to be open up to uh, international travel um, in a few weeks' time, which is uh, going to be fantastic. I'm hoping that puts the pressure back onto our government to be able to ease our restrictions um, uh, earlier than planned. Um, but uh, I, th I think, um, you know, we live in a beautiful part of the, the country. It's unexplored, it's undiscovered, it's uncrowded and um, being surrounded by the ocean, which is fantastic leading into the summer period. Um, you know, we do many unique experiences that can only be found right here in Australia. Um, along with that is, uh, a, lot, a lot of those, sorry, is uh, based on the uh, ocean-based activities as well as uh, the land-based activities. Um, you know, we have a large focus on the nature and immersive wildlife encounters, um, our four-wheel drive adventure along the coastline, the local culinary flavours, and uh, as well as the people you meet along the way and the uh, we're basically exploring um, and showing off the secrets of, of our region um, just like we do ourselves as uh, as locals so um, yeah we're hoping for a uh, influx of travelers um, that's for sure um, coming up at um, for summer that's really great to hear and hopefully that's right around the corner as well especially as international borders are opening and it's certainly an interesting point that um, obviously we have such a large country ge geographically and um, you know not everyone has seen all the signs to see in our country there's probably too many to see them all but um, that's yeah. obviously led to a great great business model on your end where you get a lot of interest in terms of domestic travel yes yeah, spot on I mean I think um, with that too we've diverse a lot um, over this COVID period where um, uh, we've just had a look at uh, what we do do and um, as I said, the, you know, there's a huge amount of um, activities and experiences that um, the Air Peninsula here offers and uh, we've opened up to uh, um, focus on a couple other different uh, things like a more special interest to us um, such as our fishing safaris, the health and wellness packages which we are, are now doing. Uh, which includes our electric mountain bikes, our uh, treks along the uh, uh, the Great Australian Bike, and also our um, you know, uh, our beautiful beaches. Um, there's some magnificent um, coastal experiences along there. We are doing um, three to four day bird watching experiences, photography um, packages, um, and of course, uh, being the seafood capital of Australia, um, you you cannot come um, down this way and not get to experience 
um, all these culinary flavours that we uh, have to offer down here, as well as doing a, 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 um, some serious events for corporate um, for corporate groups as well. So there's certainly something for everyone uh, to be had here, um, down here in Port Lincoln and the near Peninsula. It's amazing. It really sounds like you do it all there. And uh, you mentioned health and wellness as well. Is that a trend that you've noticed increasing in recent years? Well, interestingly enough, when I first started back in uh, 2005, we had health and wellness packages um, listed up on our website. And strangely, we didn't actually get much um, uh, feedback or much um, desire for these packages. But um, we've just reinvented that based on you know what uh, we're experiencing over the last 18 months. And again, this we, we've purchased uh, a number of uh, electric mountain bikes, uh, which is just an unbelievable, sustainable and economical way of um, going uh, cruising through Port Lincoln, but also too just half an hour down here is uh, um, you know one of Australia's best uh, national parks, um, and so to you know navigate um, through the national parks again on the coastline, seeing this huge amount of different uh, wildlife, um, and breathing in the fresh air of the Southern Ocean is something which um, you know is an excellent thing. But to combine this with also um, some meditation um, with yoga um, all out in the open on a, a beautiful beach with nobody else uh, around is uh, something which I guess we probably take for granted being here because we don't have an influx of, um, uh, of travellers or we don't have a large population. So, you know, this is just a very, very natural environment which uh, people who come to tour with us are generally from some large city, um, whether it be New York, whether it be Beijing, whether it be Sydney. Or Melbourne, and they come into a very small little city, which is just a, a coastal hamlet, really, uh, where everyone knows each other, and um, the the people make up uh, a large part of our experience as well, because it's a very very friendly, um, uh, very very friendly town, and um, it's something that you really can't market too much, but it's um, um, just people, the locals here certainly are um, love to uh, meet new people and uh, be be very much a uh, involved with what we do, uh, whether that be a fisherman or a farmer or just a business owner um, of the street, and uh, they welcome people in just like we do, which is uh, which is great. That's really great to hear, I've got to say. And you know what? I don't doubt that there's a lot of interest from international tourists, considering that the coastal areas of our country are, uh, seem to be known as the heart of the nation as well. So it seems like a very authentically Australian experience, I would say. Well, you've hit the nail on the head, Holly. Uh, these are authentic, and as we've uh, always described to the international traveller, it's a uh, authentic, off the beaten track Australian experience. And uh, the authenticity actually comes along with uh, meeting those local people, uh, which I mentioned. But also, too, you know, uh, it's um, it's unexplored, and it's uh, just as natural as when Matthew Flinders first discovered this uh, this um, this beautiful coastline back in 1802. So, um, you know, it's, it's raw, it's rugged, it's natural, um, it's beautiful. And um, we're very lucky that, um, you know, I'm born and bred here as a, as a rest of our guides. And um, um, we, we love the place and we can't wait for our borders to be open so we can actually do what we do best. And that's by uh, showcasing this, um, you know, beautiful landscapes to uh, people from around the world yet again. I don't doubt that. It sounds terrific and I'm sure you'll get a lot of interest when those borders open in November. Um, hopefully you'll be swamped as well when it comes to summer even more so. Now just before we wrap up, you obviously are quite aware of the best hotspots around the coast that attract attention. Do you have any recommendations for people's bucket lists? Well, we do have a few down here, and like um, as we keep on saying, um, it's one of the very few areas where you can experience different uh, uh, different um, activities, particularly when it comes to wildlife. Um, there's only one. There's only four places in the world where you can actually go cage diving great white sharks, and one of those is down here, just straight down this way. Um, um, off, off the coastline of Port Lincoln. So that's a bucket list item. One of my favourites too is actually swimming with, uh, uh, or snorkeling with, sorry, um, sea lions and um, and dolphins. So the sea lions, you know, the puppies of the ocean and uh, it's just an incredible, immersive, face-to-face um, -face experience, um, as is uh, as is with our, uh, you know, a couple of Australian icons with the koala, kangaroo, emu and their own uh, native habitat. 
uh, which is uh, very close to our coastline here as well. Um, so that's, uh, you know, there's a couple of uh, different immersive experiences like that, which uh, we include and certainly something which, um, you know, really warms the, uh, uh, the cockles of the, uh, not only international uh, travel, but also the domestic uh, travel as well. So with a combination of, um, you know, all the things that we do, um, with our you know, one to five day tours, um, a lot of that, uh, the experiences that we offer are, are private, they're personalised. We tailor make these to suit um, a family or a small group or couples, etc. So um, uh, that's something to bear in mind how we can tailor it up for your individual needs. But um, yeah, it's um, again, we're just looking forward to the country to be opening again and um, doing what we're doing. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. It sounds like you've got some really amazing things to offer once those borders do open. And, um, you know, only four locations in the world where, where they offer cage diving. Was it with uh, great white sharks? Is that correct? That's, that's the one. That's the great white sharks. There's a few others around there. But uh, this one's the uh, most feared predator of the ocean. Um, so, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity to come on down and, and do that, but also to uh, do, uh, you know, several of our day trips as well and make sure that uh, you experience the, um, uh, the region um, and Port Lincoln, um, you know, with us and uh, we show their genuine secrets and the highlights. So uh, here's your open invitation, Holly, to come on down and uh, see what we do. <laughs> I might just take you up on that and I'm sure that's on a lot of people's bucket list as well. It sounds absolutely incredible. On that note though, it's just about all we have time for right now, so I've got to let you go. But thanks so much for joining us today, David. It's been great to see you. Thank you. Pleasure to have you on. Viewers, stick around as well for more travel insights just after this break. Boarding pass, please. Hi, I'm Holly Shields, and I'll be your host for Calkine TV's new show, Travel Insights. Tune in to get the latest developments in the travel and tourism space, from updates on restrictions to travel guides to info about recreation and outdoor activities, or tour guides to the financials of the sector. Though the travel industry has been hit hard from the pandemic, there is still potential left for a revival on the back of economic upturn and COVID safe travel measures. So if you want to know where the travel and tourism space is heading, dust off your passports, pack your bags and watch Travel Insights every Monday exclusively on Calkine TV. Welcome back to Travel Insights on Calkine TV. Now it's time for some travel news. And quarantine-free travel from New Zealand's South Island will resume from next week, as the federal government revealed. The surprise announcement comes months after the travel bubble was temporarily paused in response to growing COVID-19 cases in Australia. On Sunday, Chief Medical Officer Paul Kelly said that the federal government has reopened travel from New Zealand's South Island in response to no new locally acquired cases since last year. Although travel from North Island will remain off limits until the end of the month. Well, it's time now for a look at the hottest coastal locations just in time for summer, which is around the corner. As travel restrictions ease and the weather gets warmer, let's dive into a couple of the hottest coastal safari destinations across the country. First up is the Erie Peninsula. Based in Port Lincoln, South Australia, the Erie Peninsula is Australia's ultimate temperate aquatic playground, featuring striking coastlines, vast sand dunes, secluded coves and picturesque coastal heathlands. There are a few places in the world where you can interact with marine life and koalas in their natural habitat. Come face to face with great white sharks, swim and play with sea lions, get up close and personal with wild koalas. 
Plus, you can drive through sand dunes and rugged terrain, e-mountain bike through national parks, or just sit back and relax locally, where the fresh seafood is to die for. With 100 national and conservation parks, the Erie Peninsula is emerging as a must-see destination for eco and wildlife tours. Once stayed over in New South Wales, discover the amazing ecosystem that is Stockton Beach. Ride across beautiful sand dunes, catch glimpses of the ocean, bushland and Newcastle. Here you'll be able to see the majestic shoreline of the ocean and take in unbroken views towards Newcastle and north towards Anna Bay. Spend your getaway fishing, swimming, surfing or exploring the incredible sand dunes nearby. The area is full of gorgeous waterfronts that are just unbeatable. And if the weather's not just warm enough yet, file these destinations under summer and revisit them in your bucket list in December. But for now, stay tuned for more on Travel Insights.